I'm happy to be there. Uh, my name is Hannah Tan, and I'm not the. the I am on the move. <laughs> oh, it's okay. So thank you. And uh, uh, the speaker today should have been Roy Arel, uh, my uh, PhD student, and uh, uh, lucky and happy, uh, happily. Why is that not working? Oh, okay. Hmm. All right, that's what has happened to Roy <laughs> and Orit. And uh, that was just uh, uh, two days ago. Uh, Roy was very excited to be here, and he uh, did wonderful analysis and prepared this talk and was really excited to be here. But now he's more excited, I guess. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, uh, my uh, uh, research group is very reproductive. And, <laughs> and this is the kind of reproduction of, of production that I really like the most. And, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, we're going to talk about age-related variation in soaring, gliding performance of vultures. And uh, our previous talk by Gil is an excellent introduction. So I need to skip most of the, of the slides uh, but I think you will understand better uh, what we, we are trying to um, uh, show here. And, uh, and uh, it's um, about experience. So uh, we all know that uh, animals gather experience with age and, and they establish uh, uh, their skills and, and they, they make better decisions. At least all the individuals think that they now make be better decisions. And, um, and then uh, this, uh, this um, experience effect has uh, uh, implications for, for fitness, for survival, for reproduction, and for um, everyday uh, behavior. And the question is, can we elucidate how does experience affect movement? So we move in a different way as we gain e experience. And the question is, how is that happening? What exactly is happening in this uh, uh, interaction? And uh, it could be uh, that um, uh, more experienced individuals gain uh, better uh, uh, fitness, and you can uh, measure, as Martin uh, 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 very nicely described this morning, of uh, survival of, of, uh, of uh, stalks, and Shai Rotich, is uh, now here with uh, Michael uh, Katz. Uh, is uh, uh, will present this later on uh, today in this in this room, I think. Uh, and um, our uh, word, our topic is uh, again soaring gliding, and you have seen that in in Gilstock. And what you are going to see now is again track annotation with. Uh, climbing uh, fast in red and sinking fast in, in blue. And what you see is an inexperienced uh, young uh, vulture who's, who's uh, uh, are now climbing a thermal, and you see that he's sw is switching uh, uh, direction. Here he did it once, and I think he will do it once again here. And, and you, you see that uh, the uh, thermal is tilted. And this is because the wind is coming from the left to the right. And, uh, and the vulture is, uh, is climbing this, uh, this uh, 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 tilted thermal while drifting away and then proceeding to the gliding phase. This is very uh, stereotypical uh, 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 picture of thermals in real life. They, the thermals uh, uh, appear and disappear and, and they have different strengths and different structures and, and it's a very uh, valuable and, and unpredictable resource for, for uh, 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 um, soaring gliding birds. The benefit is, of course, that uh, they gain height and then, and then they can move forward They're during gliding mostly and without expending much energy for, for uh, flopping. So uh, 
We want to elucidate how experience uh, affects soaring gliding performance. So we measured age-related intraspecific differences in soaring gliding birds at high spatial temporal resolution. The uh, most simple hypothesis is that inexperienced individuals uh, exhibit inferior soaring gliding flights and, uh, and compared to experience to adults, juveniles versus adults, and the, the challenge is to uh, say in what way they uh, perform uh, better. It could be the detection of the, of the, of the thermals. Uh, it's, um, if you fly in a glider and, and you move around and, and you know that if you won't find a, a thermal within a few, a few minutes, then you, you're grounded then it's really challenging to, to find. So gliders, uh, people who are gliding, they use, uh, uh, they use other gliders, of course, but they also use clouds. They're, they're very good, a very good uh, uh, um, in indicator of, uh, of strong thermals. And other, uh, other uh, indicators, environmental indicators, but in, in general, it's quite unpredictable. So you need skills to detect where the uh, thermals are. You need skill to select strong enough thermals and not waste your time on, on, on circling and, and gaining no, no height in weak uh, thermals. And you also need to know how to utilize thermal. So you enter the thermal with a certain uh, banking angle and this banking angle, the exact banking angles uh, is really critical or how you utilize uh, the thermals, what radius uh, the circle should be, how you track the tilted uh, thermal, and so on. <laughs> and that's at the sing uh, uh, single thermal level. Uh, and at uh, multiple thermals level is how you plan your track, how you use your track efficiently to get high enough in strong thermals and, and quick enough, and then glide very fast and, uh, and, and gain uh, horizontal distance. So that's another way in which experience can, can tell and, and, and maybe birds uh, differ in this, in this aspect. So uh, the uh, study uh, species is the griffon vulture. Uh, and uh, it's not the vulture that Gil was uh, talking about. It's the old world vultures. And uh, it's highly mobile, it's <coughs> obligatory uh, uh, scavenger. Uh, important point is that they do group foraging. They, they, they very social animals and they, they forage together. They also roost together. Uh, so we have a long-term GPS data of, of uh, the, the Israeli uh, populations and lots of birds, lots of data points. And all Spiegel, all of here, I uh, will talk on Wednesday about uh, one of these uh, of these study. This is all holding a, 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 a vulture that is going to be tagged uh, soon. And uh, and what uh, uh, Roy uh, did is to uh, move this uh, the study into the the high resolution uh, tags with one hertz. And uh, <laughs> we need to segment the, 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 the trucks and uh, estimate the parameters. This is an example of, of a truck. The bird was coming this way. And here it, it uh, climbed a, a tilted thermal. And what you, what you see is, again, the climb rate, as, as you've seen uh, before. And you can uh, estimate the radius of the, of the circle and the elevation gain and the gliding distance. And these are the simple parameters that you can get from the, from the uh, truck. You also have, uh, accel accel we measure acceleration uh, on, on the same tags of EOPS. And uh, from acceleration, you can get uh, uh, behavior. And uh, uh, Hezi Rashev is here. Hezi Rashev is going to, be a, uh, to give a tutorial on, the, on these, uh, on these uh, techniques on, on Wednesday, too. So um, what uh, uh, what he did is to uh, switch the uh, or use uh, other tag uh, in fact, but uh, but he switched the uh, configuration to high resolution, and uh, he got data for eight adults and nine juveniles uh, at one hertz for five to uh, twenty-eight days. It's itself 
have uh, three million data points uh, for this for this group, and this is only data of a flight. And uh, we, as as Gil very uh, very nicely shown, we need to uh, uh, to um, estimate the environmental uh, features that these birds encounter. And just to give you uh, a sense of the data. Uh, this is a, a vulture now flying in the Negev desert, and you see it sinking. Now it starts to climb the thermal. You can see the circling, and now faster, and you see the variation along the track. Now from this side will come two birds. These are two birds, not one. And you see they're very close to each other, and they climb itself. They separate, and, and this is now the kind of data that we can, we can have, uh, have uh, uh, today. And... Uh, and uh, what uh, uh, we did for the environmental data is to use the wonderful end data of, uh, of, uh, of Rupa. And this, I'm going to praise this work uh, also tomorrow morning. It's a very, and of course, Gil already uh, told you about that. And uh, so we use the, the data of uh, ECMWF. Uh, but the problem is, as Gil mentioned very clearly, is that the resolution is 78 <coughs> kilometers and six hours, and we're talking about one hertz data and, and, and sub-meter accuracy. <coughs> so what we did is to, to, do, to run an um, atmospheric uh, um, uh, model that is called RAMS, and uh, here we can get down to one kilometer and, and very uh, short durations. And just to, uh, to show you the, the motivation for, for this exercise, this is in, in the green, this is the wind speed that we can calculate from the drift of the tilted thermal. So the, 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 the thermal is drifted in different uh, levels according to the wind that push the thermal. So you can really calculate the wind. So the, the vultures are, are, are flying wind sensor for us. In, uh, the truck really give, give us very good estimation of the, of the horizontal wind speed, and uh, and when you, you you calculate the distribution of wind speed and you calculate the distribution from ECMWF, you see that they do not match, and you see there's no no correlation in wind speed between between the two the two sources. However, when we run RAMS. You see that the, the distribution very nicely fits each other, and 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 there is a correlation again. We are very happy to get R squared. <laughs> you see, it's nothing here. It's, uh, so uh, so uh, again, uh, and DARA is a wonderful uh, tool, uh, but it, it relies on existing data, and if you want to go local and you want that kind of, of resolution, you need to work hard, harder, and it's hard actually, uh, to, to do this, uh, this regional modeling. So uh, back to this uh, question, now we're going to walk uh, through these uh, uh, um, uh, options, and it's not that we can really nail down the very precisely each one of them, so we're doing our best given uh, the data, for example, uh, in relation to the to uh, detection, what we see in the tracks is that the, the bird is flying here, and then change course, and you can see that it was it was turning here uh, to the left, and we interpret that as if it it, 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 it detects a thermal, and then it was climb a thermal, and then gliding, and so on. So uh, so this is uh, uh, a non-local term, and and the length of this of this segment. It's, it's from which distance the bird was able to detect the thermal, and we see no difference between juveniles and adults. So in that terms, the, the experience is not, is not, uh, is not a, a, a key issue, at least uh, as this uh, parameter is, is concerned. And another issue is uh, the, the strength of the, of the thermal, and this is if they select the, the really strong uh, thermal, so we can estimate the turbulent kinetic energy as a proxy for thermal in intensity, 
And again, there's a, the, the adults uh, uh, are flying in a slightly higher uh, 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 tubular connected energy, which means that the, the, the thermals is stronger, but uh, the difference is not significant. So in both, uh, in both uh, aspects, uh, uh, um, juveniles and adults do not differ very much, and, we, and the in interpretation is that uh, the social information, they fly together a lot, these birds, so probably juveniles follow adults, and, and this facilitates detection and selection of thermals. Now we look at the climb rate, and we see a very significant difference. Adults climb much faster than the, the thermals, and the big question is why. Why they do that? So we take the movement ecology framework, and, and here we, we map the, the options. It's maybe they go for stronger thermals, maybe they uh, have better decision how to handle uh, uh, the, the thermal and what circuit, uh, uh, radius to, to circle. Maybe they differ in the, in the uh, morphology and have differences in, in wing loading, and maybe they have different motivations. So uh, one of the options is, uh, is uh, a difference in wing loading. And as you can see, there is no difference between juveniles and adults. Uh, we, uh, another option is that uh, is this uh, which radius to circle. And, uh, and this is a little bit complicated. I'll try to explain this. What, what you, you see here is that is a change of, of, uh, of uh, the climb or the scene as a function of, of, of radius. Now, the bird is now, is now circling in, in, a, in a rather shallow uh, banking angle, and the radius is, is big. So while doing that, it has enough lift, OK? So it's not sinking much. Uh, but but uh, circling in a, in a large radius gets you away from the the center of the thermal where the uh, uplift is, is uh, weaker. So you want, you want uh, to circle around the very center of the, of the, of the thermal where, where the uplift, this is the meaning of this line, that at the center of, of the thermal the, the uplift is, is much stronger, but then in order to do that you really need to do it like that, and then you lose lift. Because, because the wind is not generating enough lift, it is, it is uh, 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 tilted. So uh, there's, there's an, um, uh, some optimal uh, uh, point where, where which banking angle uh, uh, to use, and therefore which, uh, which uh, uh, radius to take. And there are some benefits for, for rather relatively larger uh, circling uh, uh, radius. And what we see here, is that uh, uh, when there's a difference in the drift that, again, we can, we can uh, quantify from, from the data, and the stronger the, the drift, the adults perform better. And, uh, and, and they, they climb, uh, they, they, they take a, a more, a, a, a more extended uh, circles. And uh, I'm going now to, to uh, get into the, uh, the, the, these details more. And, uh, and uh, uh, one thing that we have shown in the movie is that uh, uh, juveniles are changing the, the uh, direction uh, the, of, of the circle within the thermal, which means and gliders, uh, human gliders, are not allowed to do that. If you start the thermals in one direction, you must remain in the in in the same direction, otherwise other gliders will, will collide with you. But birds, what, what inexperienced birds, what they do is they, they start circle, and then they lose the, the, the big uplift, and they, they, they wonder, where is it? So they panic, actually, and they go the other way. Maybe it's this way. What adults are doing, experienced birds are doing, is a very systematic uh, search of, 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 of the center of, of the thermal, and you can see that here. They, they use the uh, tailwind, and then they do not gain much, much uh, um, uh, elevation, but then they sense the, the, the center of the thermal, and then they, they immediately turn, and they, they climb up, 
and and as you can understand, the, the thermal will, will drift to the, to the right. So it's it's very short, and you need to climb very very fast in that, and then turn again, and again wait 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 until you hear the beep 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 of the vario, and then and then you uh, uh, climb up and again, and you see very systematic way how an experienced glider is is uh, is uh, 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 using a, a, a tracking a tilt to thermal. What you see here is that uh, uh, adults and juveniles do not differ when the winds are relatively weak, when the thermal is not tilted. However, when the thermal is tilted, you see that the adults are doing much better, and they're doing much better exactly where it is important, exactly this turn to the lee, uh, the lee side, and they're doing in this area where, where you see the, 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 red, the red dots, the concentration of, of red dots. Whereas uh, the, the, the juveniles are not really uh, uh, capable of, of tracking these uh, uh, this, uh, uh, thermals. And uh, also the change the uh, airspeed, but I'm, I guess I'm running out, out, out of time. But again, from this very high resolution data, enable us very intimate uh, look and of how exactly experience is affecting the performance of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, vultures. Uh, now for the last uh, component, and uh, this is maybe a, a byproduct of, of what I've, I've seen you before, but uh, adults are doing much better in terms of the displacement they gain, they gain for, for time in thermals. So they take short, relatively short, bouts of climbing the thermals and then they, they glide and they gain uh, horizontal distance much better and much better efficiency. And uh, uh, juveniles, be probably because of their deficiency, they uh, uh, flap more, as you can see. Significant difference in the flapping. Uh, vultures do not flap much, and we can get that from the HCC data but juveniles are flopping much more and expend more energy because of that. And this is what, again, what you see here, the ODBA energy expenditure of the juveniles is significantly higher. And uh, that's a story. So if we, if or if, would have summarized, it would say that juveniles vultures do not differ from adults in thermal detection and selection, probably due to group origin, they have similar wing loading, but climb thermal slower, and uh, this slower climbing rate can be attributed to the inferior capacity of juveniles to utilize filter thermals, and they also less efficient in along the route, and uh, uh, it's costly in terms of energy and time. And uh, we'd like to thank the members of, of, of uh, of the lab and the uh, uh, Nature and Parks Authority in Israel that collaborate with us and the uh, BSF for the support. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>